I've got a two-part series on using automation within Studio One Three, and within that two-part series, it's about 30 minutes or so, maybe a bit more, and some basic information on getting quickly started with automation is buried within there. And kind of per a comment that I received this morning, I thought I'd whip up a video really quickly for those of you who just want to get your automation out really quickly, no fuss, no muss. How can you do it as quickly as possible? So that's what this video is about. And let's just go ahead and get started with that. We're going to take a look at a couple of different methods. The first way here, I've got a mojito. Uh, nothing fancy here. I haven't done any special setups. I just have an instrument track with this mojito on and I recorded a little melody part uh, with my keyboard. So that's all that we've done here. Nothing special. So the first step that you need to do is pay attention to this the automation mode here. By default it's going to be off and you need to choose one of these other modes. Read. It's just going to read your automation. You cannot record any. Touch. If you have a touch sensitive external controller, as soon as you touch a fader it's going to start controlling your uh, automation control or recording of that automation. Latch. As soon as you move a fader or parameter on the instrument. So if I start turning this wheel then it's going to record that automation. Write. Even if you don't touch anything, it's just going to write a straight line of automation across at whatever value you have your parameter set at. So this is the first step. Choose a method here. I'm going to choose touch. You're welcome to choose touch as well. Even if you don't have a touch sensitive controller, this will still work fine. And then you want to the parameter that you want to adjust. Go ahead and move that here. If you take note in the parameter display, you can see that that is being recognized, that's important. So now we're pretty much in business. I'm going to play this back as it is and then we're going to without any uh, adjustments and then we'll go ahead and record the automation. Okay, so um, pretty straightforward. Remember, all we need to do is come here, take it off of auto off, choose touch, latch, or write. I'm going to choose touch. Then we're going to hit record, and I'm simply going to adjust the cutoff. Okay, now our automation is recorded within this MIDI part here. And if I close out the mojito and double click on this MIDI part, down at th in the center area here, we can see our filter cutoff tab is there. So if we want to access that automation to edit, we can just click that tab. And this is what we have recording. And I don't like how this ended at the, at the end here. So I'm just going to double click that point to get rid of it. And now we have a smooth transition there. And if you want to see more on editing, I'll put a little link up here to part two of my automation series, uh, and that's covered there, but we're just talking about basic automation recording in this video. If you want to remove that recording, we can right click on the tab for filter cutoff and remove it there. I'll F2 and close out the editor. Now let us take a look at the next method. What we can do is just simply right click on the filter cutoff and then choose edit filter cutoff automation and then this is a little bit different because we're going to create an automation track within our arrange view here now keep in mind that when we record this automation it's going to be on this track separate from our MIDI part so if you want any automation to be uh, kind of married to the notes and this part and and travel all in one MIDI part then you want to use that first method we just went over. But this is yet another method if you want to have a separate track for the automation that you're recording. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and if we, I'm going to click this gear icon and I'm going to adjust the cutoff. And you can see in this window here where it's being recognized. I'm going to turn one of the knobs on my keyboard. You can see that that's being recognized. And I'm going to click this arrow to link the two. So now when we record the second pass, I'm going to just use the knob on my external controller to control the cutoff. So again, 
all we need to do now is just I'm going to come back to the beginning and I'm going to take the record arm off of the MIDI track and I'm going to press record I'll close out the mojito and then now you can see that we have that automation recorded on this separate automation track and we can directly edit from within the arrange view here I can double click and uh, to remove I can drag we've got this uh, trim tool where we can adjust like so so that's basically it that's how you're gonna record your automation and you can kind of stop now if you'd like but I'm gonna continue on for a second here and just I'm gonna automate a fader as well as a third-party VST and I'm gonna select this track shift T to remove it and now we'll take a look at a third-party VST so I've got battery here and I'm gonna mute that mojito and play back the battery I just have a choir sample sample here And it sounds really dull because I have the filter cut off pretty low on this. If I go ahead and open up the battery, then th this is the sample. And I've actually already, the cutoff is down low, that's why it sounds like that. And I've actually already mapped one of the knobs on my external controller to that cutoff. So if I adjust on my keyboard, you can see down below here, we're moving there. We can see that the cutoff is showing here, as well as up in the parameter display in the song page. Now, you should be okay with your third party uh, VST. If you bring it up, go ahead and adjust the parameter. You, so you should see it show up. If you don't, actually with mine, I had to uh, say if I come to the lo-fi effect here, and then adjust the bits you can see I'm not getting anything here in this display or there but if I right click I want you to see what that says and enable host automation now you can see that it's active in these dis displays so that may need, need to be another step that you do within your uh, third-party VST there can be some differences but hopefully as soon as you load it it will work now let's get back to this I'm gonna go ahead and come back to the beginning of the track I'm gonna press record And then we can see that our automation has been added to the MIDI part. And I can then double click and come in and edit that in here just as we saw with the mojito. And this is our cutoff here. We can again right click and remove. And the last thing that we're going to take a look at is automating a fader. And I have a loop that I brought in. I'll go ahead and play this back. Okay, we see what's going on there. I'm going to F3 and bring up the console. And that is on this uh, fader here, or this channel. So all, we, all that we need to do is come to the bottom of our channel. You see auto, me, auto mode is set to off. If I click here, I'll just to choose latch and come back to the beginning of the song. I'm going to actually drop this down in the beginning because I want to have it fade in and I'm going to press record I'll F3 and actually I'll just go ahead and leave this up 
and come back to the beginning of the song, play back. Okay, now this is the straightforward video of how you can get your automation recorded. Again, if you want to see in more detail, I'll leave a link to part one here. And earlier uh, you saw there's a link for editing if you want to learn more about editing information.